Origami Public Library and for our Upcycle Origami program today I'm talking about Hina Matsuri which is a festival in Japan and it occurs on the 3rd of March. The Japanese love numbers and like the the first day of the first month of course is Shogatsu New Year's. Then we have the 3rd of March being you know, Hina Matsuri. The 5th of May is Tango no Sekku and so on. So for March, Hina Matsuri basically means Dolls Festival. Hina and Matsuri. Matsuri is festival. So in Japan, and in my household when I was growing up, because my mother's Japanese, um, people would set up these displays of um, dolls. And the, the, the Hina dolls are um, basically dressed in the Heian Age um, style of clothing because the festival actually started that far back in Japan's history. It was always focused on girls and wishing them good fortune and um, good health and, and so on. And so the dolls, you would have the, um, my mother always called them the emperor and the empress. Uh, you had the Ohina-sama, which is the female doll, and the, the Odairi-sama, which is the male doll. And um, they would be at least nobles. And then you've got um, ladies-in-waiting and musicians, and then Japanese furniture, the, the, the style of furniture from the Heian period. Um, there's on this display. There's a model of uh, a planquin, which is a, a how they basically um, men would carry that box on uh, by the poles on their shoulders, and that's how the women the women nobles would travel. And you would have like little food and things like that on on Hinamatsuri day. I think even now, um, girls tend to dress up in their kimono and they have little parties with tea and um, some um, traditional Japanese sweets and things like that. And it's, uh, the dolls are usually displayed for the week leading up to Hinamatsuri. And the, the tradition goes that you want to take it down as soon as the matsuri is over so that the girls will have the chance to get married. If you leave it up too long, it might cut their chances of getting married. My mother usually had the displays up for about a week leading up to Hinamatsuri, and she always encouraged my sister and me to put our favorite dolls on the bottom um, step of the display. So we had our own personal dolls on there too. And what I'm wearing is the kimono that my mother had made, had had made for me. She commissioned someone to make this uh, when I was a very little girl. Obviously, I'm not a very little girl anymore. <laughs> and uh, what I have done is inspired by my Japanese American sister-in-law, who took a traditional kimono because it usually hangs like this. And usually you, you have it folded over and you wear an obi around it. But she took a beautiful white one and had snap sewn on to hold it closed here and another snap at the bottom left hem to come up to the right shoulder area. And she wore this as a robe over a white slacks and top as her wedding instead of a wedding gown. This was how, this was how she got married in a, in a kimono like this, only in white. It was gorgeous. And I said, oh, I could do that. So my mother did that for me so that I could still wear my kimono, which is very old. It is made of silk and is all hand sewn and was done in Japan. So that's what I'm wearing. All right. So, we're going to get to work on making our origami hina dolls. So I have the ohina-sama here and the odairi-sama here. 
and we're going to make these are not too hard. And then we're also going to make a kimono. So for the um, the Hina dolls, again, it's better to you can use um, wrapping paper, but you want to make sure that the paper has a clear, uh, a plain white backing. Most of the wrapping paper that I had had uh, different markings on the back, and so I didn't want to use those. So I decided to use some origami paper. So I'm going to take your paper and again the white side facing up and you're going to fold it in half into a triangle. Now you're going to open it up and what you're going to do is fold these two edges up to meet the center crease. So they're going to go right along the center crease this shape here. And then you are going to fold these two edges here. You're going to turn the paper over and you're going to fold these in along that center crease. So you have this. Turn it over and you're going to fold this bottom point up about, let's see, about here. You don't want to fold it all the way to the top because you want to have that a little bit of that angle there on the bottom. And then you're going to fold this point, just this point, down. And turn the paper, I'm, I'm turning the paper to face me, but what then once you fold this down, what you're going to do is you're going to fold this whole bottom edge up straight as you can like that and then you're going to fold these this edge here you're going to fold it in at kind of an angle Like so. Now, for the Odairi Sama, the, the Lord, you would leave this point as it is, and you could um, draw your face on, on it like I did with this one. And just use a black ink pen or pencil even, and um, this represents the, the, they wore a tall black hat on the top of his head. So that kind of re represents that hat. And then I just drew just, you know, like little closed eyes, little closed mouth, you know. And again, in um, order to uh, help it hold its shape, you can just use some glue right in here just to um, help it hold. Hold its shape, and you want to go ahead. These are the arms. 
So basically that, and then you can draw the face. So that would be the odaeri sama. And you do the same thing with the paper, except for the, the lady, the ohina sama, you would just fold this tip down just a little bit. And then you would draw her hair. The Heian style um, hair of, of the, um, the women was for it to be kind of long and just kind of framing the face. Uh, when you look at um, a lot of the, the um, Hinamatsuri dolls, if you just Google Hinamatsuri dolls and look at them, you will see that kind of hairstyle, that they um, did not have their hair in the fancy um, updo that you see a lot. Um, for example, in my dancer doll, the hair is more Edo style, so the hair is up. But the uh, Heian style, the women's hair was just very, very long, and then just kind of framed the face a little bit. So that's how you would do your, your Ohinasama doll. And otherwise, the fold is the same. Like I said, the only difference is top up for the, the Odairi-sama and folded down for the Ohinasama. And I uh, made that offer last month, and I'm still making the offer again this month. If you would like to have some really pretty origami paper, um, printed paper, to make your Hina dolls, you can come and see me at Bay County Library Adult Services, ask for CatCon, and I will let you have a few sheets of patterned origami paper to make your Hina dolls. Now, we're going to do the kimono, and this one takes a weird size paper, and this one is good for a uh, pretty gift wrap. You need a piece of paper about 10 inches wide and 14 inches long. Yeah, kind of big, right? What you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half lengthwise. Like this. And you want to fold the top part down, and you're going to fold it approximately half an inch or so, a little bit more than half an inch. You can just kind of estimate. It doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but it's basically supposed to be one-sixth the width of the paper here, and the paper is, when you fold it in half, it's five inches wide, and so if you try to divide that by six, but um, I went ahead and, and I just did a fold, you can see about a little bit more than half an inch folded down. Then you're going to fold that again. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You're going to fold this whole length here basically into thirds. And I just sort of um, work with the paper here. Problem with folded gift wrap is it does, sometimes it has those pre creases and you have to kind of work with, uh, around that a little bit. But you want to have it done basically in thirds. So it'll look something like this. Well, first of all, fold it in half. Sorry, fold it in half. Fold the whole thing in half. You need your crease as a guide. That's what I forgot. It's a little hard to work with the, the extra thickness of paper because you've got several thicknesses of paper here, okay? 
but just uh, do the best you can to make a good center crease. And then you take the top edge. Remember your, all the folds that you made? So it represents the, the, the thicker um, collar type area of the kimono. And you're folding them in to meet the center crease. So it looks like that. Okay, now once you have this, you're going to fold these edges in, and then you want to kind of do a squash fold at the very top. you have like this. Then you're going to fold this whole part back right along the bottom of the little triangles that you made here. Just fold it back like so. And here's where you're just going to need a pair of scissors and we're just going to do a couple of really simple cuts so that you can make the, the kimono sleeves. So right along, you want to kind of eyeball it right along the bottom edge of this part here in the center. You're just going to cut from the open edge to that crease and then cut that bottom part off like so. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So there you have your kimono. And again, if you want to, you can just glue this back part down so it'll stay flat and have a little kimono that some people um, have even done, but you could uh, take a needle and thread, make a little loop to hang it as an ornament. Um, I did a flower pattern, but you, if you wanted to do, like men in Japan also wear kimono, um, if you have like stripes or you know, geometric type patterns, you could even do one and say it's a man's kimono. So that's what we have for March and Hina Matsuri. All right. Um, what I wanted to do was just uh, show you um, some actual kimono from Japan. This is considered an under kimono. Um, in Japan, they would wear not just the, the kimono itself, they would have you know, different layers. So for mine, this was the, the under kimono for mine. And um, if you can see it, it has some leaves and cranes embroidered into it. It's just beautiful in and of itself, and it's all silk, and it's all hand sewn. And this would be put on first, and then we would put on the kimono that I was wearing for our Hina Matsuri uh, program. So this is what it looks like. It has the pattern printed, floral pattern on the sleeve and along the, the bottom half of the fabric. You can see all the peach blossoms and other flowers on this. And as I said, this one was, my mother had this one made for me when I was just a very little girl when we were living in Japan. And I am very happy that I still have it. Now, something else that the Japanese wear is uh, like a jacket. It's called a haori, H-A-O-R-I in, in um, English letters. And this one does not fold over at the front. It is worn as a jacket over a kimono 
And this one also is made of silk and has some really beautiful um, floral patterns uh, painted on it. This one just ties, you see these little silk ties, it just ties together in the front like so. And this one I was not made for me. This one my husband bought for me from uh, a vintage uh, kimono fair in Hawaii. And so these, the Howardy tend to be roughly hip length, or in my case, thigh length. <laughs> um, but just, you know, serve, like I said, as a, a coat or jacket over the kimono. And it's just another um, traditional um, Japanese piece of clothing that people would wear. And I just love this because I can wear this over almost anything. <laughs>